Hello everybody, happy World Book Day. My name is Tessa Bide, I'm a theatre maker and a children's author and today to celebrate World Book Day I am going to be giving you a little treat. I'm going to be reading the first couple of chapters of my new book in development. It is hopefully going to be called My Dog is a Spy. Now the book is going to be for uh, middle grade readers, so between kind of 7 to 10. Um, so that's who it's aimed at. If you are younger or older than that, then you're very welcome to um, be part of this as well. Um, I'm going to read a couple of chapters and then I'm going to give you a couple of exercises and games to play at home to celebrate World Book Day with me. So make yourself comfy. And here is the first couple of chapters of My Dog is a Spy. Evie Buckles sat in class, counting down the seconds until the end of the day and the start of the half-term holidays. Mr Paluzza was stood at the front of the class, droning on and on about a special event the town had coming up. So, don't forget, on the Saturday before we come back to school, King Rupert's South England tour will be passing through our very town. He will be part of a special anniversary parade, along with a collection of the Crown Jewels. He's never visited West Brimstead before, class, so I want all of you to be there in eight days' time to witness this historic event. Evie kept counting down the seconds. Twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty. She looked around the room at her classmates. They had all been lumped together in reception, and now, in year five, she reckoned none of them had had a conversation with her longer than a few grunts. She knew so much about every one of them, but they knew nothing at all about her. Eli Stebb, good at football but terrible at spelling. Amira Haddy, one of the popular girls, m amazing at swimming and never stopped talking. Lucy Wellington, one of six children. She loved drawing but pretended she didn't. And Ryan Glover, Evie's nemesis, a stupid bully who found winding her up hilarious. Thump, thump, thump. Ryan kicked the back of Evie's chair and she clenched her jaw. Of course, the only people to notice her at all would be the class jerk. Thump, thump, thump. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Evie shut her hand up. Mr. Paluzza, as usual, didn't notice her. Uh, Mr. Paluzza, it's home time. Oh, Evie! The teacher looked in her direction for the first time that day and seemed shocked that she was there at all. Do you know what? You're right. Well, happy holidays, everyone. I'll see you in ten short days. Evie grabbed her bag off her peg and dashed out to beat the queue for the bus. Her small, wiry body meant that she was built for speed and she made it outside before anyone else. The rickety school buses were parked up in front of the school. They were cast-offs from a richer school in East Brimstead when they had upgraded theirs. Evie's school had fundraised for these buses for years and when they finally arrived and were covered in posh kids' graffiti, the whole school was humiliated. Evie got on the bus to her estate. Positions on the bus were assigned by the popular kids at the start of the school year, when the old year sixes had moved on and the coolest seats at the back of the bus were now free. By now, the middle of the summer term, Evie could draw a map of the bus layout in her mind. At the back were the coolest year sixes, Maddie, Zach, Yusuf and Skye. And in the middle, you had the popular year threes and fours, Taylor, Archie, Belle, Freddie, May and Stella. And at the front were the nobodies, the geeks. Evie sat directly behind the driver. The seat beside Evie remained empty and, as the bus filled, the volume steadily increased. Plans for the holidays were shouted from seat to seat and Evie looked down at her pale, almost translucent hands. Her black hair hung like a curtain around her. Being invisible was helpful sometimes when it came to arriving late for class or sneaking an extra helping of dessert, but often it made her feel quite alone. Even her siblings, Big Poppy, 
14 years old, cheekbones like coat hangers and a tongue like a poisoned dart. Bobby, seven years old, bony elbows like chopsticks and feet that never stayed still. Or Max the baby, one year old, loud and incredibly dribbly, rarely noticed her existence. Evie? Where's Evie? Can someone please tell Evie that dinner's ready? shouted Mum at home later that evening, her hands full of too many plates, a couple of ladles, and a large pot of weird-smelling soup. Mum, I'm right here. Evie peered through her dark hair to wave at her mother. If she had reached out, she could have wiped the green, gooey soup from her mum's eyebrow. She didn't. Oh, Evie, didn't see you there. Lay the table, would you, sweetheart? Last time your brother did it, everyone just got knives. Ew, mum, not that evil soup. I swear, if I eat that again, I'll turn into a giant, human-sized bogey, said Bobby, arriving at the dinner table wearing his school t-shirt back to front and only one sock. It's cabbage soup or nothing, Bobby. I don't get paid until next week. I've put extra pepper in it, this time to spice things up a bit. Mum started ladling out the soup and Poppy sloped in with a loud sigh. She poured herself into her normal chair at the table, flicked her hair twice and resumed texting on her phone. Max the baby was sat in his high chair, warming up for his evening's performance of How far can one baby fling soup across a kitchen? Tonight, he was aiming for the space above the cupboards where the cereal boxes live. It would be a new record. So, school holidays, kids. Now, you know I can't take the time off work, so I'm going to need you all to keep an eye out for each other, said Mum. Bobby mimed, gouging his eyes out and holding them in his hands. There you go, sissies. One for you and one for you. He passed the imaginary eyes to Poppy and Evie, then pretended to be blind, knocking over his cup of water and accidentally hitting Evie in the face. Bobby! Can you stop being ridiculous for one second? Mum dabbed up the water with her jumper while simultaneously spooning soup into Max's dribbly mouth. Evie kicked Bobby under the table, the perfect crime because Mum never saw. He tried to kick her back, but she brought her legs under her chair just in time. As I was saying, Max will go to Auntie Amanda's as usual, but I'm going to need you three to behave and look out for each other. I'm sorry I can't be here, but you know what it's like with this cleaning company. If I book holiday, I won't get paid. Poppy, you're going to need to stay home with Bobby and Evie. If you go out, they go with you. Poppy groaned and muttered, it's not fair. Mum chose to ignore this and carried on regardless. Bobby, you can play in the backyard, but no going to the park by yourself. The older kids will all be hanging around there in the holidays and I don't want you mixing with them. Oh, Mum! Bobby slouched lower in his chair and started kicking the table leg. And Evie, now that you're nearly ten, you can go to the library, but that is it. You hear me? Straight there, straight back, no dilly-dallying. I will call the librarian to check up on you and if you're not at home and you're not there, you're going to be in big trouble, kid. Bobby almost exploded at this injustice, that Evie was now allowed out by herself. Evie felt like she had just been dipped in gold. A whole week with unlimited access to the library was her idea of heaven. The library in West Brimstead, her side of the city, was where all of the invisibles hung out. There was an unwritten rule that the only person you had to acknowledge was the librarian. Miss Lucy, but other than that, you could stay in your own little invisible world. Evie had read her way through the children's section and the teens, and she was now reading the encyclopedias and old stories like Moby Dick and Pride and Prejudice. She went to sleep that night, fizzing with excitement for all of the stories she would read in the week ahead. Chapter 2 the next morning, Evie headed out as soon as she was dressed. Poppy was still in bed and Bobby was playing racing games on the Xbox. No one noticed her leave. It was warming up to be a hot May Saturday 
and Evie felt glad to be heading to the cool embrace of the library. She knew the ten-minute walk through her estate like the back of her hand. Her neighbourhood, Parkcliffe, was made up of a network of small council houses, like Evie's, knitted around three large bo blocks of flats. You could tell it was the school holidays. Normally this estate was loud and hectic, but today it felt quiet, almost sleepy. The library was set back slightly from the shabby high street, and there were two flower beds either side of the door, bursting with colourful blooms, the only flowers in West Brimstead. Despite this, most people walked straight past the old building and didn't notice its existence, much like the Invisibles who went there so often. Well, hello, Evie dear, old Miss Lucy greeted as Evie walked through the large, heavy wooden doors. Miss Lucy always noticed Evie. Hi, Miss Lucy. I like your scarf. It's very pultritudinous. That's my word of the day. It sounds gross, but actually it means really beautiful, said Evie as she walked up to the front desk. Goodness, Evie, you do always have the best words. Thank you, dear, said Miss Lucy. She hesitated looking like she wanted to continue talking but didn't quite have the words. Evie looked closer at the librarian and noticed that she had red, puffy eyes, and her hands were chapped and sore. She was normally so bubbly and chatty, but today she looked haunted and worried. Miss Lucy, what's the matter? What's happened? said Evie. Oh, Evie! They're closing the library. It's all happened so quickly and this morning I came in and these signs have gone up overnight. Miss Lucy pointed to a sign hanging on the front desk. We are moving. Due to a sudden recent change of management, this library is closing. Your local library will be in East Brimstead from 1st of June. Please return all leased books prior to that date so we can transition your account. Failure to do, to do so will result in a fine of £100. Evie read the sign. It felt like someone had just opened a trap door in her stomach and her belly had fallen out. But why? Why are they closing it? Evie asked. Well, the council needed to raise some money for local road repairs and a man called Kingsley Fox offered them a lot of money for it. He wants to turn it into a, a new luxury dog hotel. Miss Lucy shook her head. A dog hotel? But that's ridiculous. We can't let that happen. East Brimstead is really, really far away. We can't walk there and the buses are so expensive. No, this... We have to stop it, Evie stammered, grabbing the sign. I've tried everything I could, Evie. Of course I have. I even wrote to this Kingsley fellow, but he never replied. I can't believe after nearly 30 years here, it's all over. I suppose I'll never get that anniversary party either. Miss Lucy sighed a long, sad sigh as she shuffled off to alphabetize the atlases. Evie's stomach still hadn't, hadn't returned, but she had a spaghetti junction of thoughts racing around her brain. She took one of the signs from a nearby pillar and left the library without even a glance at the books. Her feet pounded the pavement and her head bowed in concentration. A dog hotel! A hotel for dogs! Evie's brain was on overdrive. What do dogs do in a hotel all day? Watch Lassie on repeat and order bones on room service? Evie wove through the crowds in town like a fish swimming upstream. How she wanted to meet this Kingsley Fox and give him a piece of her mind. When she stopped at a crossing, she found herself shifting from foot to foot like a boxer, imagining punching him in his big fat businessman's tummy. Evie needed to calm down and make a plan. She crossed the road and crouched down in an alleyway between a fruit and vegetable shop and a hair salon. None of the busy people on the high street noticed her. The lane was cobbled and quiet, and Evie could feel her heart rate slowing and her thoughts begin to settle. She needed to find this Kingsley Fox and see if she could mess up his plans for the dog hotel. 
Or maybe she could try and find a way to fundraise for the road repairs herself, so the council didn't need to sell the library at all. Evie saw something move out of the corner of her eye. She jumped up and prepared to run. The moving object was a brown cardboard box, upside down and with pictures of potatoes decorating the outside. It scraped over the cobbles and moved closer to her. The box then bumped into a wheelie bin, reversed a bit, did a 180 degree turn and started to move in the opposite direction. It got caught on a drain pipe and couldn't move any more, but started to shake and make a strange sound. Evie was alone with the box creature. She tiptoed closer, being careful to avoid the empty apple crates and rotten vegetable cast-offs. She bent down to the height of the box. She lifted the corner slowly and, to her surprise, something inside licked her hand. So there you have it, the first two work in progress chapters of my brand new book. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please do let me know what you thought. Either get in touch on social media or you can write me an email. My email is admin at tessabide.com. Now, I hope that it's made your imagination start to fizz and sputter. And if you've got a little bit of time left on this World Book Day, I've got a few little tasks and games that you can try. Have a go at drawing your very own spy dog. What gadgets would your spy dog have? What kind of dog would they be? Fill in as much detail as you can. You could write a description as well. And please do send me your pictures. Number two, what happens next? Have a think about where we ended up at the end of the story. And what do you think might be under the box? You can either write or draw or storyboard what happens next. So that's where you have little squares on a piece of paper and you have a picture and some words per scene or story moment going forward. Evie likes using unusual words. In the story she says, pultritudinous. Choose a word that you use a lot, either when you speak or maybe when you write, and look in a thesaurus or go online and find an online thesaurus for some alternative words. Kingsley Fox is the villain of this story. Imagine what he looks like and draw or describe him in words. When you've done that, you could just draw or describe another villain from another story. Happy World Book Day, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.